Hello. Hi, what's up? How are you? Everything good? I hope your mom is doing good. I hope everything is happy for you and cool and stuff. <laughs> so today we are going to be reading a book because you recommended it. And uh, today's sort of honor, I don't fucking know what to call you. <laughs> it's you. For the life of me, I cannot say your name so i'm so sorry for that but this is you <laughs> and you recommended a thousand splendid sons by khaled husseini so that's what we're gonna do that's what we're going to do i've been wanting to read this book for a long time but i've never gone around to it i have a professor had a professor it doesn't teach me anymore and he kept recommending me this book and I've always been like I'm gonna read it sir I'm gonna read it sir but I never have and if you're watching this sir I am so sorry professor like I really really meant to read it but I just like got depressed <laughs> I'm like so sorry <laughs> but here I am this is a 2007 novel by an, uh, Khalid Husseini who is Afghan American and the novel spans over a period of 40 years from the 1960s to 2003 Focusing on the lives of Miriam and Layla, who are two Afghan women. Miriam, who is an intelligent child suffering from, um, I guess, the stigma from her being a bastard or an illegitimate, illegitim, illegitim, illegitimate child or a child that is um, born out of wedlock. The abuse she faces around that and other things throughout her marriage and life. We have Lila, who is born a generation later, who is in privilege in comparison to Miriam, until their lives intertwine, which it are, until their lives intersect with each other, and she is also forced to accept a marriage proposal from Miriam's husband, Rashid. I am so interested in this. I love stuff like this. Like, I've been interested in literature from all over the world, not just like Western what the fuck uh, yeah so this is a great chance and thank you again to you for recommending this because i wouldn't have picked it up if you didn't tell me so thank you <laughs> okay so right out of the bag chapter one i just read one chapter like sat down five minutes read it and i want to talk to you because i like <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know if you watch me or not, but like, if you do, I told you before that, like, the first chapter of a book is what determines to me the quality of the book and sort of like a general idea, an umbrella over the rating and if I'm gonna love it or not. And one chapter in, and I feel like this is going to be, um, good. <laughs> one chapter in, and I can tell that this is something beautiful. I love when authors like appreciate where they're from and use analogies, use words, like just appreciate where they're from and well, like not even like in a story that talks about that certain place that has characters from that certain place, but like you can write a, a completely different story about a comp with a completely different plot but still like incorporate words from your own native language and places from native language traditions and stuff and i love when authors do that he used the word harami to um well he did like he did but like they're not like another character so they used to word harami and harami in uh, Arabic is thief and in Farsi is uh, bastard or like, yeah, bastard. Um, I'm not native, I'm not a native speaker, but like it's that. Also he used the word jinn, which is, uh, you know, a demon or a dark spirit or whatever. It's not a ghost, it's not a ghost. But, like, he could have just used, and that wasn't even, like, I understand that harami meant something, like, they, like, if, if it was, like, used, like, another word was used, it wouldn't have been the same, like, I understand that, but not with jinn, though, with the, the word jinn, like, he could have used something else, could have, like, made the same impact and the same thing, but he didn't, like, he could have used demon or spirit, but he didn't use jinn, and I love that, I, I really, really like that when authors do that, I am, like, so excited that I'm reading this. So I am on chapter 23 and honestly regardless of the story and how heartbreaking it is and whatever is happening in it and the action that's happening in it and the characters and what they're they're doing like regardless of all of that it's 
beautiful like it's smooth and you want to still be in there the writing is realistic it's heartbreakingly realistic and beautiful and raw and moving it's also gripping and yes there are cliffhangers at the end of almost every chapter that you know you want to continue because of them obviously but even without those like when we have a chapter without a cliffhanger like a chapter that ends normally or on a good note i still find myself like wanting to continue because like i want to be with miriam i I want to stay with her i want her like to continue her story and it's sort of like less lonely in a way so we've met lila we've not done with Le we're not done with lila's chapters but we just met her and it's sort of interesting seeing the like suffering but like in an opposite way so lila is more educated and open-minded and more liberal um in comparison to Miriam, and raised in a household that is more educated and more liberal when it comes to a lot of people at the time and at the place and it's interesting seeing the suffering that comes as well from that because you would think like from Miriam's point of view you would think if only this house my household was like this or the outside was like this and that and that and if i had more chances but then you see it from the point of view of someone that does have those chances chances and it's also like suffering but from a different point of view it's almost as if Miriam is more accepted on the outside in her community but is suffering on the inside uh, whether that be in her home or the inside the inside like mentally and Lila is the opposite the whole time we're getting to know Lila is the time of the war the, the civil war and it is interesting but I I, I would have I think it's a little slow or boring but I would have I wouldn't have thought that if we didn't start off with Miriam like all I think about all I'm thinking about reading her chapters like I just want to meet Miriam again and from the summary I know that they're going to like their lives are going to intersect in some way so I'm just waiting for that but so far strong strong start like really really good so um Lila's parents got got so they were they were uh <coughs> They were planning to run finally and they got got in the middle of running and uh, Miriam and Rashid found her so we finally got into that intersection where they met and I never thought I would be happy to see Rashid or to hear about him but I missed Miriam so much that I just like could not help it when she started saying like I was seeing like glimpses of people and then there was this girl trying to help me I knew it was Miriam and I got so freaking happy and I'm just like I'm sorry about your parents but like mm, we get to be with her again so like I said Layla's parents got got and Rashid and Miriam took her home and tried like fed her helped her like medically and fed her and took care of her and stuff like that and Miriam started to notice some stuff like Rashid being charming like not himself like he's trying to be all sly and charming with his old papery ass right and at first Miriam is sus and not liking what's happening but then Rashid starts fucking with her head and it's just like okay then I'm not gonna marry I'm not gonna take her home I'm not gonna leave her here let's 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 leave her outside and then everyone can do stuff to her and they can rape her and kill her and shit like that and then Miriam is like okay fine whatever like if I don't marry her, like that's what he suggested. Let's marry. Let, let me marry her, and then not let me. Like he's not gonna take Miriam's permission. He's a fucking asshole. But he's go. He, he says like I'm gonna marry her, and if you don't want me to, I'm not going to. But like let her outside. She's gonna get gotten. You know it. Like rockets are fucking raining everywhere, and then she's just like fine and i'm like interested in seeing how it's gonna go down between miriam and lila i'm expecting only the best from miriam but like it's a lot to deal with but i know like miriam has a gold of heart but so like i'm interested to see like the dynamic for me personally i hope they gang up on him while he sleeps he's like 60 or whatever the fuck he's like all this fuck plus he's been smoking all of his life so i personally hope that they're gonna push him or like wait until he falls asleep and like poison him or whatever and like you know dig a little hole in the backyard they can even put him in his child that was dark so then they get married right like to help her and oh something happened that like i didn't cry i didn't cry yet but we're still just in the middle of the book so like we still have time but something happened and with Tariq, and uh, Tariq is Miriam's friend uh, or lila's friend and oh my god that was sad Mm, I don't fucking spoil the reading, so like fuck it. But uh, yeah, Tariq and Lila like grew up together, and then they started having feelings together, and then they um, sinned. 
so uh, yeah and now she like she chose to stay with Rashid like she chose to accept his marriage proposal because she's Carrie and Tariq's baby and it's I like it I I hope uh, I, I'm not hoping much because this book is notorious for breaking people's hearts but I'm still hoping <laughs> there was this point after like before like when he was trying to woo Lila he was like trying to be sly and charming and shit and like educated and fun and then like after it was from Miriam's point of view and after she was just like after she accepted after Lila accepted her his proposal he completely like threw away the knife and fork act and started eating with his hands and I thought that was funny for some reason you know that thing, if you're not a woman you don't know but if you're a woman, we get compared to shit like the objects on the fucking daily she's a new car, she's an old car, she's a used one she's this, she's that, which are you gonna choose a used shoe or a new shoe we're not humans if you didn't know, we're objects like, he went ahead and compared them to cars I, I really hope he dies like I really hope they could kill him and scissor their life away like one point that that was just there and I noticed it I don't think we're even supposed to notice it but I, I liked it and I like how respectful the attire was the Muslim attire was talked about like how it wasn't spoken about in a hatred or in a begrudging manner even if the character wearing it did not like it or not approve of wearing it um, if they saw benefits in wearing it they would uh, talk about the benefits and if they didn't they wouldn't like say how could anyone wear this and this is this and this is that they just respectfully did not want it for themselves and I, I like that I like that I like so that. I have about 10 chapters left uh, dense and I've I haven't like I've, I haven't read work that's dense in this way it's not dense in a Ulysses type of way or like a gravity's rainbow type of way but it's it's heavy that would be a better way of describing it actually it's heavy it's it's not the writing the writing is beautiful the story is although heartbreaking but very very beautiful the writing is beautiful it's not a book that you can just like read like three hours of it like at the beginning it started off like that and i wanted to stay with miriam i wanted to be with her i wanted her to tell me her story and i didn't want to leave her side but then when it came to lila it got a little bit slower and now we are having a dual pov which is like i like it we're having uh lila and miriam back to back since they're living together and it's just heavy and chapter 36 when they try to run away it just filled me with so much anxiety i i swear like i was contemplating whether i should finish this or not because it just filled me with so much anxiety and then they got caught and they went back to they got basically played by someone and they got back to rashid's house and it was hard like after that chapter i just like put it aside and did not want to like pick it up again and picked up something easier I'm reading Stroke of Midnight and it's a slow like a uh, smutty kind of book and I wanted like a break from A Thousand Splendid, a Thousand Splendid Sons and in it the story is this is not spoiler if you're interested in a Stroke of Midnight but the uh, female main character basically uh, gets paid by someone for like illicit contact <laughs> I got them mixed up <laughs> I, like I kept thinking about a thousand splendid sons and I got them mixed up to the point where I was just like wait why did like Lila when they were trying to run away her and Miriam were trying to pay someone so they can accompany them as their uh, male relative because women cannot uh, travel alone and I was confused and I was just like wait why does she have to pay him like doesn't he have to pay her and then I just like I, I knew that I needed to take a break because I was getting smut and like heartbreaking realistic shit mixed together and that was like my sign to <laughs> just filled me with so much freaking anxiety like I, I needed a break after that and now going back to it it's just getting more and more difficult to read and uh, yeah but I really really like it a lot so I finished and i'm going to take you step by step like since the last time i saw you until i finished chapter 42 if you know you know if you don't i already spoiled everything so i'm just gonna say it um rashid is literally the literal meaning of the word despicable i cannot stress this enough 
Despicable and Rashid are synonyms. I, I can't. Uh, so what he did was, I don't know, play something on Lila. I'm not gonna spoil 100% of it, okay? Play something on Lila and let her believe something that wasn't true. And now, um, chapter 42, we discovered that that, that he lied about something super important and my heart fucking grew winged and fluttered when I finished chapter 42. God, this is one of the most important stories that I have ever read, if not the most important stories that I've ever read. Beautifully written, heartbreakingly realistic story uh, from the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and then to the civil wars and then the reign of the Taliban and then the post-Taliban and the, the violence, the hurt that this country and its people have suffered and the fear um, this country and its people have seen and the hope and faith they held on to which is like a huge point in this like no matter what happens like as violent as the shit that was going on went down they still hand down to religion to faith to hope and i love that i love when people do not paint um like something just because of the actions of someone else you know it was about the struggles of womanhood and the hardship of motherhood and what we have to do dude what we have to do and go through to survive in order to have generations um thank god we have some form of a happy ending because sweet baby jesus this was depression this was depression important depression but depression uh, this was one of if not the most important books i've read this year if not ever really um yeah what the experience Thank you so much, uh, dude, you. Thank you so much again. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm really happy I picked this up. Um, I, it was a five out of five stars. Uh, I am honestly like shocked. I feel like I need to take a break or read something like completely easy and different in order to have a normal life. I, I'm like, like, I feel like I need um, some sort of time to recuperate from the blast that was this book. Tell me, have you read this and what you thought about it? And if you liked it, if you agree to my opinions, if you don't, then what do you think about it? And what else would you recommend? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>